Welcome to this BiofinQ tutorial. My name is Hannah and today we will have a look at histogram plotting in the visualization tab. I have already loaded a directory here. In previous tutorials you have learned how to do that as well as gotten an overview over the different areas of the visualization tab. This particular directory contains images of two biofilms growing together over time in two fluorescence channels. One biofilm has, um, or both biofilms have fluorescence in the red channel and only one biofilm has fluorescence in the green channel. Now with these two populations, we should be able to identify or to distinguish them due to the intensity, which we can see in a histogram. So the histogram will help us to separate these colonies. You can choose the plotting method here. We'll start with a 1D histogram and later also have a look at the 1.5D histogram. For the 1D histogram, we will now plot intensity mean channel 2, which is the green channel. And by clicking on plot, we will get the histogram. And we can see that there appear two populations of cells population with low intensities and one population with high intensities. These low fluorescent signals here are not due to background because they have been calculated on the already segmented cells, which means that everything represented here corresponds to segmented cells and not to background. Such a histogram can tell you the distribution of your parameters and could, for example, help if you were to distinguish the two populations where to draw the threshold. You can also visualize other parameters in the histogram, for example, spatial parameters, in which case you have to be a little bit careful with the bin size. I will show you why at the example of distance from substrate. Here we should be aware that the bin size, which is determined by the number of bins, should not be smaller than the cube size. Let's have a look at our cube size in this case. These were the settings at which we segmented the biofilm. And under objects declumping, we can see that we used the cube side length 20, which corresponds to 1.4 micrometer. A typical biofilm height for us is around 15 to 20 micrometer. Therefore, if we want to have a bin size larger than 1.4 micrometer, we should have 10 bins or less. So if you divide your range, in this case it's around 14 micrometer, by your bins or by the number of bins here, you get to the bin size. Let's have a look at this. And we can see nicely how the number of cells decreases the higher we go up in the biofilm. Now what would happen if I choose a bin size which is smaller than my cube size, in this case 30? We can see now something odd happening in my graph. Here I get a number of different peaks which appear at regular positions. And this is because these positions are the regular spacing of the cubes. And this does not actually represent how the number of cells increases or decreases the higher we go into the biofilm, but it's actually an artifact of our cubing, which we can avoid by decreasing the number of bins as we did before. So be careful with spatial parameters to choose the correct amount of bins when you plot a histogram. Now we will have a look at the 1.5D histogram, which resolves one parameter by another. In this case, we can choose two axes, for example, a spatial axis and another one, in which case you would resolve a parameter spatially. Here we will keep distance from substrate as a spatial axis, and look at some of the other parameters, for example, again, the intensity, to see if the intensity fluctuates over the size of the biofilm. 
We plot this again and you can see that even when I go higher into the biofilm, the intensity does not decrease a lot. So in this case, there is no imaging artifact due to um, imaging in too high uh, Z slices, for example. This is something that you could identify with a method like that. Let's look at another parameter, for example, the volume fraction inside the cubes. This is a measure for how dense your biofilm is. And if we plot this, we can see that the volume fraction inside the cube decreases as we go up in the biofilm. And that means the biofilm gets less dense as we go up, which makes sense because as the further we go up, the more sparse the cells are. And in some cases, it also means that the cells are less close together and therefore the cubes are not entirely filled. So now you have seen how to use histograms with Biofilm Q, that you need to leave a, be a little bit careful with the bin size when you have cube biofilms. And in additional tutorials, we will have a look at all of the other options here in this plot type.